Okay, today we're looking at the Casio FX991 EX and we're going to be doing a plotting exercise. If you ever wanted to plot a graph, you know that plot means exact. So you're going to need a set of uh, coordinates in order to do this. And you could test individual values and draw a table on your page, but this calculator does something really good and finds it for you. So let's have a look how we do that. I'm going to go to the menu and down at the left hand side we have something called table which is function number nine. If you're into remembering uh, the numbers and what they do <laughs> then it's number nine. And we'll go into that with an equals. And we want to plot two. So technically you do them both at once, but let's do one at a time to begin with, and I'll go back and show you. So f of x, and to input, we use this x up here. So x will be our variable up there, squared. Uh, take away 7x, and just like in real life, you don't need to put the multiply in between those two, it just knows. And we'll press equals. Now this is where it asks us do you want to do another function at the same time? In this instance, we're just going to do one so we don't confuse. And it's going to ask us for a start range and well, a starting point and a range. So looking at the function, it's a quadratic. They typically go around the axes. We can get enough if we go probably with plus or minus five, but Let's just do 10. So we're going to start at negative 10 and we're going to go up to 10 and we're going to go up to 10 in steps of one. So that's going to give us a range from negative 10 to 10. Press equals at that point and then we'll get values for our graph at these different values of X. These are coordinates basically. Okay. So let's, let's um, just go back there. And we have the x squared minus 7x. Imagine that we've just put that in. And press equals. It gives us the opportunity to do another graph at the same time. So it could be time saving. Alternatively, you could just put this next one straight into the first one because you're tan x. So it works with all of these as well. Sometimes you can't remember what tan x looks like. So we're going to get some coordinates to see what's going on. Now tan x, like all of the trigonometric graphs, will go around that center point. Um, so let's have a look what range we'd like. Considering that we're going from 0 to 360, but I know the period of tan is one is like 180 degrees, repeats every 180. So I'm just going to go for plus or minus 90. Now you might get greedy and think, okay, let's, let's make a massive table. I think if I went up in ones, this calculator may not handle it. I know you want to try it. <laughs> okay. It doesn't, doesn't like it. If you ever get an error like this, okay, you can, you can go back, right? So you can go to where the error was. That's not quite accurate. Is it? That's not where the error was. The error was this too much, too big, too powerful. We don't need to change these numbers, but we do want to change the steps. So a reasonable amount of steps, maybe 10 degrees. Let's see if it can handle that. It's good. So at negative 90, we've got something. Oh, dear. this is the previous one, by the way, you can't get confused with this one. This isn't the X coordinate. So imagine that last function we had at the top here. And that's what that is. That's the problem we're doing too. You've got to know what you're looking at. Okay. So, all right. So at negative 90 error, hmm, something strange happening. Well, what do you think that is? That's an asymptote. And we can begin to get an idea of what's going on here. And our scale can be found if we just go down the table. It's like the number never goes above 5.6. All right, so if we keep that to 6. So we think there's an error at 90. Well, there should be. 
as an asymptote. And I saw one at the bottom as well at plus 90. That that's, uh, that settles that then because we want to know where the asymptotes for tan are. And rather than plot all of these, you can get a feel for the, the graph, can't you? So as you're approaching the zero, which is here, we're going to be at zero. What's happening? We start at negative five and we're getting smaller and smaller until we get to zero. So 10 in, starting down here, just roughly. And as we go across, we're getting smaller and smaller until we get to zero. Is it something like this? Okay, I know it doesn't go perfectly through, but <laughs> we'll get there too. What's happening on the other side? We're increasing, not by the same amount, it seems to be an increasing change to exponential-ish. And it carries on till we get to five by the time we're at 80. Let's just call it that. This might be a very skewed graph because of the scale that we're using, but this is tan. And that's what we should remember. And if we don't, we can use this function to carry on. If this isn't enough and you want to know about what's happening here, which I'd be interested in what's happening between 80 and 90, you know what to do. You can press the AC button or we'll put tan X for the first one. Now the range will go from 80 to 90 and we'll go up. Oh, didn't give me a chance. Didn't give me a chance. I'll go down to it. Did it go up in ones? Okay, so that's only 10, isn't it? Let's see what's happening. We know what's roughly going to happen. It's not going to like it. Let's press start. Okay, we're increasing, we're getting bigger. <laughs> we're getting very big. Okay, so now we're at 57, it's way off my scale. By the time we're a slither away, it looks like we're going up there very steeply. And what happens when we get to the 90? It's an error. And we know that's the case. Should we go even more? Let's say we want to know what's happening between 89 and 90. It depends what you're doing with your scale, but this could continue. And if you then change the limits again and you go up in 0.1s, you'll see what happens as you get closer and closer to 90. It's, it's generally going to be approaching infinity. One way we could see that is um, with the identity. So we know that um, tan is equal to sine over cosine. And if we look at the value at this point here, sine of 90 is, I'll just draw it in roughly, I don't imagine that was one. <laughs> okay, this is a poor drawing. It's, it's something like that, but it's so skewed. Okay, it's so skewed, it's not, it's not gonna work very well, but um, let's say that's one, isn't it? So when x equals 90, that's what this is. Then we have sine of 90, which is one, and then cosine of 90, which is zero. So this point here represents somewhat of an impossibility. Unless we think about it philosophically. So this point, one divided by something small, should we say, just to start us off. You can imagine this is, it's 100, right? It's something big because this is small and it goes into one a lot. So one divided by something very, very, very small. It just gets very big and something, call it one, divided by something infinitely small. We can define zero as something infinitely small. Okay, so if that was there, you would say it went in infinite times. I, I can count how many times this goes in. It goes in one, two, three, four, five, six. So 
that's a million times. But this one here, zero, you'll be counting forever. So sometimes we get this result in A-level maths and we need to conclude about what we find. If this becomes a solution, we could define this as something infinite because we know it approaches there but that is philosophically speaking it's um, an interesting point but that's how you plot in the graph it's how you you don't necessarily see it but it's how you get the coordinates and you can investigate larger amounts rather than just substituting one thing at a time so super useful. If you like this content and you learned something, it'd be great if you hit the like button or the heart um, and subscribe, uh, subscribe, come along for the ride. And uh, I love this cream, by the way. It's on my hands as I am talking. Um, and it's just amazing. Bath and Body Works, smell. Makes you feel like a million dollars. I love it. See you in the next one.